Hello once again, this is David Mandel, and this is the beginning of Chapter 5 of um, uh, Eckert's book on um, Linux Systems Administration. Um, okay, um, what we're talking about today is file system administration. And um, by file system administration, we're going to be talking about disk drives. And that includes such things as hard disk drives, floppy disk, if anybody can remember what a floppy disk is or was. Um, once again, hard disk, removable hard disk, um, such as this thing here um, with a USB port or possibly a uh, Actually, this one has USB, and it has eSATA on the back. It has an Ethernet connection, and a lot of these have FireWire as well. And um, um, or the internal drives that go into your system, or other things that look like hard drives are um, uh, Of course, um, CDs, DVDs, um, things that look like this um, are the um, flash flash drives, and of course, SD RAM, XD RAM. Um, well, all of the billion different types of camera card type devices. Um, all of those fundamentally look like a hard drive from a, uh, a Unix command line point of view. The command lines vary a little bit, but fundamentally they all look like hard drives. Each one of those has a physical format as well. We're not going to talk too much about the physical format, but the disk or the book talks a bit about the physical formats, um, mostly of disk drives. And that's because most of these devices do indeed look like disk drives by the time the operating system see them. They basically are uh, devices that look like um, we, we have a oops, that doesn't work. I'm Marking with the eraser here. OK, but a disk drive is basically um, a device that has a number of round platters, circular platters, that, that are all stacked up together. And then on those, there are um, sections, concentric circle type things of um, that have magnetic charges on them that can be um, 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 positive or well, yeah, positive or negative, polarized one way or the other, and we break these into sections because we can only handle a section at a time. Each of these sections is called a um, a sector. The total circle is called a. Um, well, it's part of a cylinder. Actually, the cylinder is the stack of these circles, one on top of another. And uh, groups, and, and the d disk gets written to sector by sector, or actually it's by groups of sectors, which are called, uh, I believe it's clusters in win Windows or blocks in Linux uh, or Unix. Um, OK. These disks can then be. Um, um, divide it up into or, or partitioned into parts. Oops. OK. The disk can be partitioned into parts, and, um, and, and we can make a file system on each part. Now, before continuing, I should mention 
that basically if you have a device like a flash drive or a camera card they or a floppy disk for the most part, they really look the same as hard disk um, from the computer's point of view. The um, uh, controller boards and the um, uh, intelligence on the devices handle all of this. So from their point of view, they look like hard drives. I suppose a floppy disk you can't really partition, but uh, you can build a file system on it that looks pretty, m very much just like the, f well, it is the same as the file system you would form on a disk partition. Um, flash drives and stuff, I d um, guess I've never partitioned one, but but there's no reason you can't partition them, um, and they work just fine. Um, I'm trying to think about a floppy disk. I've never partitioned a floppy disk, but um, I'd have to try that. I, I'm not absolutely certain one could do that. Um, in any case, um, but actually, I've even done little files on the hard disk, made the file, pretended the file was a hard disk itself, and partitioned that. Uh, that's a doable thing to do. Um, I believe it gets a little tricky at certain places, um, um, but there's ways of doing it. I've done it, and and um, it's a lot of fun, actually. Um, it might even make a good uh, lab. Um, the um, uh, next thing, oh, the, uh, the one thing is a few of the devices are slightly different than hard drives. Uh, as I say, floppies, I'm not sure you can partition. I've never done that. Um, and uh, in the case of D CDs or DVDs, they do look like hard drives in many, many ways, but um, they're not quite exactly the same as hard drives. For one thing, instead of having a magnetic material, um, you actually have a uh, little groo physical grooves in a, um, a hard material. Um, and they go in, and they're laid out in a uh, spiral instead of the um, um, Cylinder, well, the cylinders are cir concentric circles like we have on a hard drive. And of course, I suppose a device like uh, this is really um, not laid out the same way as, as a hard drive either, but, uh, but they make these look like a hard drive. In the case of a CD or a DVD, they don't really look like a hard drive entirely to the operating system. And as a result, we have to use different commands to um, deal with um, CDs and DVDs than we do hard drives. Um, instead of using F disk, um, well, we don't partition um, C uh, DVDs or CDs. Um, instead, and the other thing about them is that they're not really a writable, read and write type media. They're more of a write one time media. Yeah, there are some newer formats where they pretend that they're multiple write and uh, formats, but I don't know. I haven't used those formats much, and I'm skeptical of them. And the truth is, uh, I'm not the only one. OK. But to write, um, uh, to create a image on a uh, DVD, you can't use the same commands because you kind of have to do it all at once. You can't just copy files over to it like you would a hard drive. So instead, you collect all of your files in a directory, and then you run a command on that directory called make ISO. Um, make ISO FS. And that's a command line that has a lot of options on it. And that will create, take that whole directory, and it creates one big file for you. I better get back here if I'm going to use hand images. But it creates one big file for you. And that file 
is what we call an ISO image, and it's ready to put onto the CD or the DVD. Then you use a command that will burn that onto the CD or the DVD. The commands that we use for that, well, the command I'm used to using is called CD record, or actually before CD record, there was a command called CD write. But the modern command for that, that uh, CD record has been replaced by a command called OWDIN. And they work pretty much the same way. And they are really just a command that copies this file to the DVD in a burning type manner and takes care of some error correction and things of that type. Um, I have never tried it. I would think you could probably use CD to copy to the um, to copy that ISO image to the um, DVD. Um, although since there's no error correction in the CD, I'm I'm not sure it would work. Um, another command, which is also a copy command that I really think would do the job, would be D DD. Um, DD is a copy command that we use for copying images to things, and that will probably work for an ISO image. Um, although I, um, uh, although really I would use this W O N D I D M, and the truth is that's the command I use all the time to do that. Um, or you can use GUI interfaces, and there's a number of commands that have GUI interfaces that let you read and write um, uh, to CDs and DVDs. There are no doubt there's a couple in your menu systems. If you look down on the menu systems, the command I use, which is a GUI command, is K3B. Uh, another one is Espresso. Um, there's oh CD exhaust or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, there's uh, XCD roast, which was a great command, but it seems to me like it. Every revision, it gets worse and worse. I, that used to be my favorite command to write to a um, uh, to uh, create a DVD. It was called XCD roast, but I I don't like it anymore. So. Um, the newer revisions are just not, in my own humble opinion, not as good. So I would use I use um, K3B, um, or the truth is sometimes I use the command lines. Um, but usually that's when I'm writing a script to do all of this. Okay, uh, let me go over here and check just to see what we're doing here. I haven't been keeping track of my time very well. Um, on disk, I think I described this last time, and the book describes this really well. To make partition on a disk, you use fdisk, or there's a couple variations of fdisk. I think there's, boy, I can't remember what they are, but I think there's an fsdisk command. Let me become root here. Uh, S fdisk, maybe. F, 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 that guy. Most people use fdisk, and that's the one described in the book. It works just fine. There are a few other commands, though, for writing to uh, for writing disk partitions or partitioning your disk. Ffdisk is, I think, one of them. Um, and you can type man to find out about it. Um, I thought that was just an f. No. And there may be a couple others. Um, I think it's SF disk that I use when I um, use well when I use F disk from um, from um, a script because it's m the responses are more predictable than F disk. F disk works from scripts, but it's a little tough because now and then it's got little if statements and the responses are unpredictable. So let me end right here.